Hello everyone and welcome to this lecture on how to use the internal rate of return function. In this lecture we're going to go over what is the IIR function and also how to use it in Microsoft Excel. So let's get into it. This video is being brought to you by my website, danriverapmp.com. And here on this website, you can register to get free project management templates to help you in your everyday work as a project manager. Also, there's online courses offered at a discount to the normal price. There's also a blog where you can get valuable information on various uh, topics of project management. And also there's videos here that can give you a quick overview of various project management topics. And also finally, you can be abreast of any of the books that I plan on releasing in the online store. So again, please take a look at this website, danriverapmp.com, and you can find the link for this website in the description below. So firstly, why is there a project selection process? We want to look at this question first because we want to evaluate the fact that not any project can be selected. What happens here is that the leadership identifies any projects that best implement the corporate strategy. These are the projects that are going to provide the most value to the organization and execute the particular strategic steps that the organization has as part of their goals. So any strategic goals that the organization has, they're going to select the projects that are related to these particular goals. So you're not going to have a situation where any project is selected. This has to be a very carefully selected process because here to the second point, there's only a finite amount of money for these projects. Only a certain amount of these projects can be selected for execution. Now, in regards to the function itself, what is the IRR function? Basically, what this does is that it estimates the profitability of potential projects and produces the annual return for these particular projects. So this is one particular parameter in defining and selecting ultimately the project that's going to be undertaken. But this IRR function does help in the analysis of which particular project to undertake. The internal rate of return, the higher it is, the more desirable an investment or project is going to be. Now, keep in mind that projects are not necessarily costs. They're known as investments. So yes, they're on the surface, there is a cost. For example, a project may have a $250,000 cost to be implemented, but that $250,000 cost is considered an investment. So that's why you're going to see this term used sometimes instead of project cost, you'll refer to it as an investment because that's what it is. If the project delivers on the benefits that it will ultimately produce, it'll be considered an investment. And then finally here, the internal rate of return can be used to rank the projects in order of profitability if it's a situation where you can only select one particular project. So what we're going to do right now is that let's go in and take a look at an Excel example of using the IRR function. So what you have here on screen is a worksheet that was previously prepared. We have our years. Uh, we're going to assume that the projects A, B, and C are going to be starting in the year 2020. And you'll notice that the first year, it's a negative value here for each project. Now, what this is saying is that these projects cost $250,000 to execute. So the investment is going to be $250,000 by the organization for each one of these projects if they were to be selected. And so you have that in the first year, 2020. Now in the years 2021 through 2025, you'll have here the expected rates of return for each one of these projects. Now, the organization may select a predetermined expected rate of return. In our case, we'll take an arbitrary number of 50%. And the way you go ahead and you figure out the internal rate of return is that you have to take all of these particular values from the years 2020 to 2025. And these are the return values for each particular year, keeping in mind that the first year is the expense or the investment for the project. And then the actual return on that investment follows in the years afterward. So the internal rate of, of return function is here. 
in this particular cell B9. And if you look up here, the formula is pretty much simple. You have the IRR, and then you have the range for which the values will be involved in that internal rate of return function. So you have project A with an internal rate of return of 57%. You'll have project B with 51%. Project C with 57%, similar to Project A. And as you can see, this particular formula, the internal rate of return formula, that's copied to all of these particular cells. Now, if you notice, with the internal rate of return, the expectation at 50%, all of these are over 50%. So what this means is that if these three projects were part of an overall portfolio to be executed by the organization, they would select all three of these projects because they all exceed that 50% threshold. So if it's a situation where the organization has to pick three projects for a particular portfolio to be executed in a year, these projects can be selected because they all have an IRR of 57% and this project B has 51%. Now, if you're in a situation where these are mutually exclusive and you can only choose one project, you may want to lean with project A because if you notice here, the internal rate of return for project A and project C, they are both 57%. But if you notice, the rate of return in each particular year for Project A increases as each year executes. Now, if you notice in Project C, there are some years, for example, in 2022, where there's more of a rate of return for Project C than Project A. And then that case is again in 2024. Project C has more than Project A. But if you notice here, it fluctuates a bit. You're going to have increases in the return, but then there's decreases. So if the, if the expectation is to have returns that kind of fluctuate like this, you may want to have a more stabilized project here like Project A. So that kind of gives the answer. If these were all mutually exclusive, you would want the Project A as it's more stable and it gives you the same internal rate of return. So that's going to do it for this lecture. Thank you so much for watching this lecture regarding internal rate of return. And if you have any questions, please leave a message.